Today we have a comparison between two crossovers. This is the Mazda CX-30 Turbo and this is the Dodge Hornet GT. And we're going to do a zero to 60 as well as a full comparison so that you guys can see for $40,000, which of these two is the one to spend your money on. As far as styling goes, this Dodge Hornet has gone the slightly more aggressive route. So you do have some actual functional vents here in the hood, as well as some arguably muscular lines. And overall, this Hornet is visually a little somewhere almost between a Dodge Charger and a Dodge Durango. But funny enough, it being a Dodge, I cannot seem to find a Dodge logo anywhere on it. It says Hornet on the back and it does have a little Hornet logo on it, but nowhere can I find an actual Dodge logo. It's just got the two Dodge stripes there and 18 inch wheels along the side. The Mazda CX-30 is seen here in a nice deep red and we have 18 inch wheels. This is an overall premium looking crossover, although it does have a decently thick bit of cladding Though, in my personal opinion, I don't think that takes away from the styling on the CX-30 in any big way. So right now we are lining up in the Hornet to do our zero to 60 test. I'm going to go into sport mode and this car has a two liter turbocharged engine, 268 horsepower, 295 pound feet of torque and a nine speed automatic transmission. And there is a more powerful hybrid version of this car, but this is the more comparable comparison to that Mazda. So uh, just double check my settings here. I am sport mode on. I'm gonna brake torque it a little bit and we'll see what it does. I've got the Solo D already, so. <laughs> Not a dramatic launch but it's a decent amount of pickup from this car. Solo DL says 6.14 seconds from zero to 60, which is really not a bad time, I mean, especially considering that you know, this isn't a supercar or anything. And we're also above 5,000 feet of elevation. We're at about a mile above sea level. So I'm actually pretty happy with it doing six seconds. I'll do one more run just so we can confirm it. Oh, a little bit of a chirp from the tires there. And let's see about that run. And that time we got a 6.20. So yeah, pretty consistent, just above six seconds, zero to 60, which is really not bad. So I am now in sport mode in the Mazda CX-30 and this is a 2.5 liter turbo engine. This is the more high end powertrain option for this car, 250 horsepower, 320 pound feet of torque when it's running on premium as it is right now and a six speed transmission. So I'm going to brake torque it uh, as per usual in sport mode and let's see what it does. Ooh, a little bit of wheel spin. 320 pound-feet of torque is a decent amount and they're 60 miles per hour now let's see what the solo DL says 6.65 seconds so that is our time at a mile above sea level here in Colorado and just to be thorough I will do one more run in this direction as well so same as before brake torquing and it's a, actually a surprising amount of wheel spin when you set off in this car after brake torquing it like that i'm surprised that the traction control doesn't do more to stop that wheel spin but i actually kind of find it a little bit entertaining to be perfectly honest maybe that's just because i'm a little bit childish 6.44 so a little bit better um but six and a half seconds in the CX-30. Inside of the Mazda CX-30, you have a relatively luxurious interior. 
It's mostly black, mostly pretty dark, a little bit of brown on this particular model, and some piano black, but a lot of really nice switch gear. All of the buttons, everything that you touch in this car feels fantastic. And I'll go ahead and start it up so that we can take a quick look at the 8.8 .8 inch screen here in the center of the dash. It's not, there we go. It's not a massive screen and it does feel somewhat far away. Um, this is also not my favorite infotainment system to use in, in terms of just being able to uh, scroll through and navigate through everything. But overall, the interior on this Mazda is very sharp. And we have an analog gauge layout here in front of me as the driver. And even though it is analog, it looks pretty sharp and very modern. You do also get a heads up display here in front of the driver. Stepping into the back seat of the CX-30, it is compact. The front seat is set where I would have it. And even at five foot 10, my knees are up against the back of the seat. Although I do still have some headroom left. And one nice thing is having vents here as the rear seat passenger, although I don't see any USB ports. And if I fold this down, I have a pair of cup holders, but Otherwise, it's a fairly sparse backseat. Now, the Mazda has a power lift gate, and when you open it up, you get 20 cubic feet of space. So, yeah, I mean, it's essentially a tall hatchback. There's a decent amount of space here compared to a small sedan. And if you fold the seats down, all the way down, then you'll get about 45 cubic feet of space. And you can see that it's not totally flat going from the trunk to going on top of the seats, but with those seats down, you could haul around a decent amount of things. Inside of the Hornet, you have a much darker interior. It's pretty much all black in here, aside from a little bit of red stitching. And I would have to say that in terms of materials, this interior feels like a step below the Mazda. There's a few items that I think are done really well. I like the speaker grills up here on the side of the door. That's a great look. And really the most impressive thing on this interior has to be these screens. You have a 10.25 inch screen here in the center, much closer. And this is a very, very sharp screen, decently responsive, but really high resolution. And then in front of the driver, a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. I'm not against having analog gauges, but this instrument cluster is really good looking. However, what I will say is that there are a fair number of items on the interior that while this something like this looks nice to the touch, it feels definitely on the cheap side. Inside of the Hornet, I have, I would say, I mean, still a small back seat, but slightly larger, my knees aren't touching, and I still have decent headroom, and also vents back here, but I have USB ports as well, an A and a C type USB, and still have cup holders back here. So if I was going to spend some time in a backseat in either one of these vehicles, I'd probably prefer this one. I also have two speakers in the door here versus just one in the rear of the Mazda. The Dodge Hornet, also has a power lift gate, but by contrast, there is 27 cubic feet of space here. And if you put the seats down, 55 cubic feet overall. So if you really wanna maximize your cargo capacity, the Hornet is the one to do it. Although I will mention that this liftover height is actually decently high. It's almost up to my hip. Also, these seats don't go quite flat either, but one cool thing that they do have is a little pass through here so that maybe if you have skis or some long items, you could pass them through without having to fold the seats all the way down. As for what the Mazda is like to drive, it feels very natural, very almost analog in a world of vehicles feeling more and more synthetic with their feedback and the feeling that you get from the controls. And in terms of power, you can definitely feel that it's more torque than horsepower but this car has 
no problem pushing itself along even though we're up here at 5,000 feet above sea level. It's also nice and quiet on this interior and it's a premium experience. This is a great interior and it's overall a great car to drive. Now, of course, this Mazda does have a six-speed transmission, and in this day and age, that is a little bit old school, but it drives really well. And the thing that I personally find very appealing about this six-speed is that you can get into the throttle a ways before it downshifts, so it makes the car a little bit more predictable because it's not just shifting all the time. Now, the Dodge Hornet is... A noticeably higher profile vehicle than the Mazda CX-30 so you get a slightly more commanding road view and a little bit more of a leaning toward SUV feel than more of like a hatchback feel that you get in the CX-30. One thing though that I maybe I'm, it's just because I'm not used to it but the turn signal stock when you flip the turn signal on, it then returns back to center while the turn signal continues going, and that hasn't been an issue for me as I've been driving, but uh, it is just something to get used to. The transmission here in the Hornet is much more active than the transmission in the CX-30. You can frequently feel it going up a gear or down a gear, and they're not dramatic. It's not like it's a lurchy transmission. You can barely feel it but if you're really paying attention to what this car is doing you can feel that the transmission is pretty busy on paper one of the major differences between these two is the fact that this has a six-speed transmission and this has a nine speed but when it comes to fuel economy actually the mazda is one mpg better combined this is 25 versus 24 in the hornet so you're not really suffering any loss of fuel economy by having fewer gears here in the Mazda in case that's a consideration. And in terms of price, this Mazda is about $37,000 as tested versus about $40,000 as tested here on the Hornet. So then brings in the consideration. In terms of performance, the Hornet is a little bit faster, but they're pretty comparable. In terms of tech, the Hornet has a lot more in the way of screens. It's also noticeably more spacious. But the Mazda has the nicer interior, slightly better fuel economy, better value, and a few extra features like the heads-up display and the fact that it has a sunroof. So which of these two cars makes sense for you depends on what your priorities are and which of these two satisfies the most of your highest priority items on the list that you want to check off. So let me know down in the comments below which of these two would you pick to have in your garage, and we'll see you all in the next video.